the Zimbabwean national anthem and uh, one can only ponder whether we'll hear that national anthem again at the Rugby World Cup, whether they will be back here in four years' time. Interesting indeed to see how many African countries there will be for the next World Cup. Zimbabwe might find it tough. So the 24th and final pool match of the 1990 World Cup about to get underway here at Ravenhill and Belfast on this overcast day. Japan was just Zimbabwe with just uh, the one change from their side that went down to Scotland 51-12 with Chris Porter coming into the second row and Ruby moving from lock to side of the scrum. Yes, that won't upset them much because Naruve is uh, not really tall enough to be a, a world-class lock, but he's a very good player. Ten of the Zimbabwe team, incidentally, from the one club, from the old Hererians club in the Zimbabwean capital of Harare. And the Japanese side today with just the one change as well. It's in the front row where Masahiro Kunda comes in for his seventh cap today. Yes, it was interestingly saying about uh, would Zimbabwe be back the World Cup next uh, next time, that is in 94, um, 95 it is, uh, with Namibia who are playing very well and South Africa obviously to be considered. So two might have to drop out. Let's hope too that the seeding will be left till a lot later this time so we don't have a clash like Australia and New Zealand in the semi-final. Mr. Reno Orkay indicates the start of this match was Japan playing in the red and white stripes from left to right and the Zimbabweans in the green and white looking a real jumble of colour isn't it and they're similar stripes playing from right to left in the first half Okay, not happy with the gap between the two sets of forwards for this first line out and requires the throw in to be taken again just a few metres inside the Zimbabwean half in the first minute of play First line out, won by Zimbabwe, perhaps an ominous sign there for the Japanese, but their forwards into their work with plenty of vigour. And tidy ball coming back on the Zimbabwean side, and the Japanese mauling well, but it's freed on the short side for Zimbabwe. Back to their halfback McMillan to Craig Brown, kicking into the open spaces. Takahiro Hosokawa, the Japanese fullback, dispatches the ball promptly into touch. The 24-year-old from the Kobe Steel Club today playing in his eighth test for Japan. It's interesting to see that Japan didn't even try to contest that line-up. They just poured through the gaps, did you notice? Let's see what they do here. Back to Sarath's usual <laughs> line-out, which is won by the Japanese. And slipping through the gap is Kuzuki. Up there from fullback is Hosokawa as well. Japanese, as they always do, of course, love to move the ball. Even in the opening minutes of the match, they've lost it. It's been retrieved by Zimbabwe, but Rene Orke calling for the scrum for the knock-on. And let's hope that the amount of movement we've seen in the first minute of the play continues for the next 70 minutes. 79, it could be a real humdinger of a match here in Northern Ireland. A lot of it's going to depend on the referee, Hoke. Difficult area today for the Japanese, of course, will be in the scrums, but that's a very solid scrum from the much lighter Japanese pack. As the number eight, Sanali Lapu, makes ground up over the advantage line. And again, they switch play the Japanese and the little kick, chipping through to the corner flag. Back there is Curran, the fullback, 
He has to scamper into his in goal area. He's in trouble here. Curran, he's going to have to run it out. Delaying his kick until the optimum moment. In fact, he delayed it too long. Lost it forward. Well, he really was being rather optimistic there, Brian Curran. He had plenty of opportunity to get rid of the ball. He didn't until it was too late. He hasn't played particularly well, Curran. I thought he made a lot of mistakes against Gotham when, uh, in fact, caused three or four tries against the Scotland by not taking the ball in the full and playing poorly. And yet he's had a lot of experience playing in the tell. Very good opportunity here for the Japanese, but that set move has gone astray. Picked up by Kashihari inside the 22. It's there again for the Japanese back. As the little centre, Kotsuki cuts out one man. And Hosokawa up from fullback. That one sure will be a penalty to Japan. It looked to here, from here that uh, the Japanese fullback was played without the ball. In fact, the referee was playing advantage anyway for an early offence by Zimbabwe offside. So an opportunity here for Japan to post their first point. Yes, he bowled in, but he pulled through that uh, hero. It was a very, very, very good run. See there the Japanese fullback uh, being taken out of play before, in fact, he had an opportunity to receive the pass. But the first infringement was back offside by the Zimbabwe back in front of their own post. You can hear a lot of children's voices here at Ravenhill, and that's been the other good feature about having what we one might say is some of the uh, minor nationalities in terms of rugby here playing that uh, children have had at least a, a great opportunity of seeing different nations play, particularly of the lesser side, because seats have been so expensive and so hard to get for the big matches. So Otakawa scored all his team's points in their opening match when they were beaten 47-9 by Scotland. executed kick in Japan after just a four minutes of play leads Zimbabwe by three points to nil. Osakawa takes his point challenge from the World Cup to 16 with that penalty and Japan was just the sort of start they would want. Yes, they're trying to move the ball very quickly and trying to make the Zimbabweans turn and that's obviously what they've got to do when they're at a weight and a height disadvantage. They restart from halfway as the match is underway again. The kick are very deep from Brown, but the Japanese fullback with uh, plenty of time to get his kick into touch. The way 22 and halfway inside the Japanese half. The much taller men in the Zimbabwe lineout with a massive height advantage over their Japanese opponents. Second clean lineout one today from Zimbabwe. Craig Brown's hands letting him down in midfield. 23 years of age, he went to the first World Cup as a teenager in New Zealand in 1987. Today playing in his 13th cap, 13th set for Zimbabwe. The little halfback, uh, Horikoshi. And that's a nice little kick as well. Again, Brian Curran, the fullback, didn't seem uh, terribly keen or eager to get there in any great hurry. Is he reason to intend on, you know, on stopping Mashua as he chased that kick? Busy start being made here by the Japanese, but more good clean line out one here by Zimbabwe. But the interception from the captain, Sejo Hida, steps out of one tackle, support there from the hooker, Kunda, inside the 22. And as it starts to open up for Sonali Latu, the whistle is gone. interesting that Latu is playing uh, for Japan. I mean, he was so nationalistic in many senses. And also, uh, we've been on the isolationist, but from time to time it's unusual with those, uh, to me that they accept anyone from outside their own country to play for Japan. But they have. Brown, who gets out of one tackle, but the Zimbabwe in a bit of trouble here. Nice work there by Brenton Catterall, who gathered up the loose ball and tidied it up for Zimbabwe. And they're able to clear from their own goal line. But it's Japan that have looked the most promising in the first uh, 10 minutes of this match. 
They lead by three points to nil. How much ball will they win from the line-out this afternoon? Well, particularly the crucial ball, which is... Uh, this is one off their own throw, and again, that slightly innovative approach to the line-out has worked for Japan, but however, it has been lost forward in the midfield there by Hirao. The Japanese players have been penalised. For the inevitable, going over the top. Haven't we seen heaps of that in this tournament? Good indication of the uh, impact that the Japanese have made in their week-long stay here in Ireland. They've already got some hometown support in the form of some converted fans. As they're on the break again, is this elusive second 5-8 and Captain Hida up? They keep the momentum going. Out there on the left wing is Yoshida. Tries to have his man on. But a good tackle made on him by William Schultz. He realised he had to go there and then because this Yoshida is really quick. Schultz who looked as if he might have just been giving him a yard or two much there, but he narrowed the gap, made a good smothering tackle and took Yoshida into touch. Just in the nick of time, as they say. Matua again, the long loopy pass out there to Matua. The bounce was kind for him, but by the time he'd got it, the Zimbabwe defenders were there, but the Japanese, these tenacious men, despite the disadvantage they have with size, the smaller they are, the harder they try. Well, the Zimbabwe would-be tacklers are going very, very high, and the Japanese are ducking under their arms. I hope they don't get caught with one very soon. But... Uh, and they're spinning out of the tackle. Good ploy. Millen feeding the scrum. Good scrum there by Japan, putting some pressure on the Zimbabwe scrum as they managed to clear it, but not without some difficulty. A few metres inside their own half. This is Brendan Dawson. The loop forward to Zimbabwe. Takes it up to the 22. Carried on by Chris Porter. Inside the Japanese 22 for the first time, but again, the Japanese with the counter-attack. And here he is, this man, Yoshida. This time he gets away from Schultz. Gets his kick away. So quick with the counter break. He's got a lovely add off, hasn't he? And he's got that pass at the end of the day, too. He's just about making it. You can see it's going to happen before the end of the day. Karen kept his angle. Brown again inside his 22. He hasn't found touch, a rather poorly directed kick, giving possession away to the Japanese, but in turn, four skills there from the Japanese. It's a nothing kick, wasn't it? Zimbabwe led off the hook there this time, Curran. Settles things down for Zimbabwe as he finds his touch on halfway. Well, these big forwards of Zimbabwe are being run round a lot by the Japs. I mean, they're picking up a lot of ball off Zimbabwe throws even in the line-out. They're running through and scampering it back. From 15 metres in from touch, and halfway. Middle again. Then they okay, not happy with the scrum. To be put down again. Probably the lightest scrum I guess we'll see at the World Cup, Zimbabwe and Japan. Admitting again. Tidy ball once again. There's not much fluency. And that inside combination between McMillan and Brown at the moment, having a lot of difficulty clearing the ball quickly and cleanly. And so Japanese loose forward, pouring through again. It's the Japanese backs, too, in particular, when they get the, the midfield ball, or they regather it again, get that second phase possession. They're snapping a wee bit, but just panicking slightly. They want to take a wee bit more time so they maintain a rhythm. Away come the Zimbabwe forwards again, led by Brendan Dawson, up over the 10-metre line, and the Japanese have been penalised again. 
for not staying on their feet. Second penalty awarded to Zimbabwe. We've had 12 minutes of play here in Belfast, and the Japan are hit by three points in it. As Uzamu Ota, the 26-year-old, the heaviest member of the Japanese team, seems to be in some pain there as his uh, leg is causing him some problems. 105 kilograms, he's uh, easily the heaviest man in this Japanese pack. It's really been the Japanese that have made all the running in the first 10 minutes. Yes, they have. But then the pressure's gone on with either a big tackle or running into the bigger man, and they've lost the ball. They're losing the ball too much in the tackles. And on the deck, in uh, rucks and malls, they're actually kicking it through, gathering it, and then laterally losing it. Osama Ota takes his place. Zimbabwe prepare to take the penalty from the boot of Craig Brown. And uh, really for only the first time in the match, Zimbabwe inside the Japanese 22 with a set piece. And this time calling for the short line out. They tap it back and they clear it quickly as far as Katsushiro Matsuo. And Matsuo gets his kick away off his left foot. Good kick from the Japanese first 5-8. Good, dare I say it, nippy little player. He's uh, had a lot of skill, as you say, but he's a, he's a very good player too at hitting the half break and running blind. Well, despite their height, the disadvantage, the Japanese with their creative thinking at the line out. In fact, they're hit by five to four at the moment, but this time it's Zimbabwe to try something different, trying it deep. But again, a list of knock ons there. This one coming off a Zimbabwe player into so Japan. Good position for the Japanese backs here. Center field with big blind to work with. Two out. Good line up here. The quick hands again to Yoshida. And from a standing start, he still beats Schultz. Where's the support? It's there, but the pass has gone astray. The momentum carried on by the loose forwards as they move it again through the back. But once again. And letting the Japanese players down. This time it's Kuzuki that loses the ball forward. And that was their best scoring opportunity there. They had men to spare out here on the near side. Yes, they're just trying to race too fast. They're trying to do it 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Lovely stand up. He stood oh, his man up there beautifully. Beautiful inside, too. But then undid much of the good work with that rather poor pass. But once again, the Japanese quick to straighten the game up and suddenly found themselves with an overlap situation there, but uh, Kuzuki losing it forward. Fifteen minutes of play in the first half at Belfast, and just the three points, penalty, simple penalty to the fullback, Osakawa, as we prepare for the scrum. There's been a replacement made in the Zimbabwe team. That's a very good scrum from the Japanese. And the ball has gone loose. It's picked up by Brown. But again, he's lost it forward. The referee playing advantage here for Japan as they feed it again to Yoshida. And this man, he is so elusive. Manages to turn it back nicely for his halfback, Matsuo. This is heat out. Masuo on the right wing gets his first touch of the afternoon. Turned back by the number eight, and again the Japanese running it, getting some very good possession here. The fullback, Osakawa, is up, times his pass nicely to Yoshida. Hira keeps it going. Well, if they keep moving it like this, they're going to run the, the um, Zimbabweans ragged. As you can see there, those forwards just made no effort at all to try and close off that gap as the Japanese switched it from right to left and then had that lovely run down that wing. But again, they don't make sure that the ball is going to go to hand. Brian Beatty feeding the line out. And again, it's uh, tapped back by Oyagi for Japan. It's untidy ball that rolls back towards halfway. The Japanese forwards back there very quickly and they tidy it up nicely for their halfback. Now the big kick from Matsuo testing Brian Curran, the fullback. He never looked very safe under that ball. 
back there coming in to help him was William Schultz. The ball has gone loose. Now if Matsuo can control this, but he doesn't. The momentum, he had too much gas on there, and his momentum saw him roll into touch with the line open. And again, uh, as you say, Earl, they just seem to be doing things at 150 miles an hour, when a little less pace would probably be quite beneficial. Yes, I think Chicky Kono must have given them a rousing team talk. They don't have salt mines in Japan either. I don't know where he's going to put them, but he hasn't been very happy with the way they've been playing. He thought that they'd be perform a lot better than this. Chicky Kono, Mr. Japanese Rugby, great man. Most unusual to hear him speak. He speaks with that clipped Oxford accent, and you can't believe it. He's absolutely fluent in English. Matsuo, who just couldn't keep himself in the field of play after he managed to pull in the ball but nonetheless another opportunity here for the Japanese as they move it on the near side the pass nicely taken by the fullback and Matsuo again taking that final pass once more taken into trunks just a couple of meters short of the corner play so a host of scoring opportunities coming the way of Japan in the first 20 minutes playing like a team of hyperactive school children with the speed and energy that is playing here in the first 20 minutes of this match. But can they convert it into points? That's proving the difficulty. As Brown again in trouble with an awkward pass from his halfback. That's about the best that he could do. He hasn't found touch opportunity here again. As this time, Hosokawa kicking for Yoshida. He's up there in a flash. But once again, just as the corner flag beckons, they're taken into touch. The speed of Yoshito Yoshida tell you what, Earl, if they had a 100-metre dash here at the World Cup, I'm sure he'd win easily. Very quick, isn't he? My first impression was that he must have been ahead of the kicker to get to the ball so quickly, but he wasn't. He accelerates so quickly, though. Perhaps Lajuske would beat him over 100, but he certainly wouldn't over 50, would he? Tremendous speed when he takes off over those first 10 metres, which, of course, is so important in rugby. It's speed over 10 metres is probably more important than over 100 metres, as the Japanese again threaten the Zimbabwe line. Yes, that is the goal line right there. I think the Zimbabweans are so tough at this present stage that they can't even shove them scrums because they started off with a good one for a start and now they're having trouble at scrum time. Look at this again. The Japanese, they might fancy themselves here for a pushover try as the halfback scurries through a couple of weak tackles and what does Rene Orke say? Yes, try. Matsami Horikoshi, the halfback, saw the little half gap there as it opened up on the fringe of the scrum and he zipped through for the first point. Richly deserved by the Japanese. Their first try this afternoon, they lead by 7-0. Well, again, he very nearly got turned back. He started in, saw the wee hole. Look at this with the... Uh, too small, really, for that big guy to stop with a tackle. He went right under his arms again. Picking it up with those little white gloves that he wears and gets to the line just to no more as the Zimbabwean tried to turn him on his back and stop him from grounding the ball. So Japan are hit by seven points to nil after 21 minutes of play. Chance for Hosokawa to add the extra two points. Pushed it out to the right. Japan are hit by 7 to 0 with that unconverted try to their halfback, who added the penalty kick by Hosokawa in the opening minutes of the match. We see it again as the Zimbabwean scrum, the heavier Zimbabwean scrum, just disintegrated and the gap appeared and through <laughs> went Horakisha. He nearly, he nearly lost his neck as the Zimbabwean tried to yank him back into the field of play. But what a confidence piece for Japan with that good scrum then. Just running around, I think it's really tired. The, the Zimbabwean forwards out particularly. Brian Curran, the Zimbabwean captain, kicking from outside of 22. And again, lovely ball skills displayed there by the Japanese. It's Matsuo, the winger, that took it. Feeds it to the big lock forward, Oyagi. One of the taller men in the Japanese team at 6 feet 2. Get out. Puts it in the air, waiting underneath it is uh, William Schultz. 
Not the time to put it under one arm, which should be. I'd be getting it back if I were you. That's a much needed ball for the Zimbabweans. They really haven't been in the game for the last 15 minutes. They've hardly touched the ball. And a rather wasted kick from their halfback. Plenty of time there for Hosokawa to ensure that it goes dead. Bill Kitt. They will have to revise that confident prediction he made before the game that Zimbabwe would win. They haven't looked like it of what we've seen no, in the first have. 20 minutes. Well, I might have it wrong. But surely if they group together a bit and hang on to a bit of ball, Zimbabwe, they're capable of they are winning line now. All they've got to do is tighten it up a bit. And they're trying to play loose and try and play the sort of the same way the Japanese are. They're not playing tactically well at all in the first 20 minutes. So the Japanese have been penalised for that scrum. And the referee was playing advantage for Zimbabwe. There wasn't any when the kick went dead. And so now Craig Brown has the opportunity to put three points on the board. Much needed points for Zimbabwe. So the score remains at seven points to nil. And we've had 23 minutes of play in the first half as we come back to the 22. Well, they certainly need plenty of support just at the moment because they really only seem to be playing in about second gear at the moment. Nice kick and a nice take from the restart. Nicely taken by Hayashi, the lock forward. Matsuo driving Zimbabwe back inside to their own 22. As Curran. And again, he hasn't found touch. This is just where the Japanese love to attack. This is their number eight, Sanali Latu, the Tongan-born number eight, makes play up to halfway. Zimbabwe do well to recover it now. A few gaps starting to appear in the Japanese defence. As through goes the big prop forward to Zimba, and he's too quick for the Japanese from that close range. Well, he needed to be all right in attack because he's missed about five or six tackles on defence. He's been very poor on defence up until now. And I thought um, that man Garvey was angling himself out into a run there. Did you notice? Number three. But Simba, just a bit faster than Garvey. Well, the big gap opened in the Japanese defence and True went the big prop forward and he offloaded it to Zimba just 10 metres short of the line. He's got plenty of gas from that close range and he skipped away for the try at seven points to four. Here's Garvey number three there looming behind. But this was Alex Nichols who was thinking that he might match the feats of his uh, fellow prop forward. But uh, thankfully for Zimbabwe, he did the wise thing there a few metres from the line. And he and fed the pace. Fed the pass to Zimba, who was virtually unmarked, and then he went for the try. And I noticed Zimba this time didn't make the big dive either. You should remember four years ago, he made that ginormous dive after a brilliant run against Romania. He dives in like nothing on earth under the stick. And in diving, he popped his shoulder down, <laughs> damaged his wrist, and that was the end of the World Tournament for all men too. So Zimbabwe, I'm sure, heartened uh, by that try. A very good try it was too. So one try apiece after 25 minutes of play here in Belfast. With Japan ahead by seven points to four in this really frothy game of footy. A special welcome to our viewers all around the world watching this match, and including, I'm sure, many watching this match in Japan. And it's the final match, an important match for these two teams. It's not so much the wooden spoon they're playing for here in their particular group, but a chance to register their first ever win in the World Cup. And again, moving the ball wide. They love to free it to this man, Yoshida, and why not? He's dynamic, he's elusive. And he's proving a handful for the Zimbabwe defence this afternoon. And there's a line-up here. But once again, the handling shoddy and unfortunate for Japan. They had three or four players out there. They had the overlap. But to no avail. They just get up tight, don't they? Because they can be brilliant little handlers. Hand handlers. They'll take balls anywhere, as we've seen in the past. So the pressure goes on there, and they disintegrate. They're able to make some impression on the heavier Zimbabwe scrum. It's be a very encouraging sign for the Japanese forwards. 
of the Carver, a few metres from his own line. In fact, the Japanese are moving the ball around so quickly from ruck to ruck and from side to side that these big forwards of Zimbabwe are actually circling. You can see them going round and round the middle and actually not doing anything or going nowhere, as they say. And I think they're fast running out of enough energy even to jump at the line out. <laughs> Brian Beattie prepares to throw. This is a Brendan Dawson at the back of the line out, and that's where the ball has gone. Dawson does manage to tap it down. But again, how many times have we seen that the Japanese forwards pouring through the line out, picked up by Kunda. Kunda does well to recover it again, carried on by Sonali Latu. Inside the 22, Japan threatening again, ahead by seven points to four. And Japan making 50 metres from a Zimbabwe throw into the line out. It's why that big lock just threw the ball back like he did. Both of just flung it back to nobody at all. I mean, heavens, he should be setting that ball up, shouldn't he? Japanese front row of Ota, Kunda the hooker, and Takoda. Fed cleanly and crisply from the halfback back to the fullback, across to the centre three quarter. Katsuku, only 15 metres short of the line. Horikoshi again. The quick hands across to Yoshida, out to his fellow wing, Matsuo. What does the referee say? It was, in fact, not forward. Yoshida, who'd come across from the left wing, he was playing advantage, however, for Japan. They've received a penalty as they take the little tap, hoping to catch the Zimbabwe defence sleeping. Just a couple of metres short of the line, Japan, Zimbabwe defence at sixes and sevens there, very slow to recover. Good, quick thinking there from the Japanese. Mind you, I think I would have liked the three points. It was very close to the pace. It was more or less in the same line as you see that scrum forming down now. Not a hard kick for horror. Put the cover. So this has to be a six-point scrum for Japan. Or else they may well have caused to regret it. From the scrum, across the Yoshida. And that's exactly what it is. Well, it's going to be a, a four-point scrum at least. Underneath the post. That's why they took the tap penalty. It's 11 points to four. Again, he had to move in, but he did it. Yoshida gets his second try of the World Cup in 1991. And the sheer pace and quickness of hands from the Japanese putting Yoshida in. Did I see a little bit of a Campisi goose step here? As he makes, there it is, the little goose step as he changes gear and another one. And that's enough to get him past the tiring Zimbabwe defenders and right round behind the post. If you wouldn't believe this, this is, you wouldn't believe it's the same side that played against Scotland on Wednesday. 13 points to four, but of course since then, uh, Earl, they did have that very good performance against Ireland when yeah. they went down by 32 to 16. And uh, continuing with that good form, have a look at this lovely try from Yoshida again as he brushes off William Schultz who's, who's having a bit of a nightmare game out there marking this man today what a handful as he shows a clean pair of heels for the entire Zimbabwe defence Japan get their second try Zimba gets some beat from the restart Thought for a moment that he might run the ball, but wiser counsel prevails, and back to the 22 we come for the restart. Half time, just uh, 10 minutes away in Japan. Fully well, deserved this 13 points to 4 lead, two tries to one. Most of the match, I would imagine about three quarters of the match, has been played inside the Zimbabwean half, not more, and that's where the Zimbabweans are going backwards again into that same territory. Back towards halfway as away scampers Horakichi again inside to the centre of the captain Hira. Yoshida's screaming down that left hand touchline again. And they are just too quick for the Zimbabweans. They're playing this game at a completely different pace. Yes. Uh -huh. I think they sense not only victory here but 
a very big victory as well. I don't think the Zimbabweans might have been out on, uh, you know, had a few notes out in Belfast recently. They don't look as if they can even bend the present of that. But there's not much energy at all coming from the Zimbabweans at the moment as uh, Mruvi tries to tidy it up for Zimbabwe. Look at his feet again. I mean, he just threw it back on the deck again. Absolutely crazy. The Japanese have been penalised and Craig Brown a few metres from his own line. Well, I thought that try of Zimbabwe might have just galvanised the Zimbabweans into some sort of life, into some sort of energy, but it doesn't seem to have been. There's no cohesion at all. They're not getting together in rucks, they're not tidying up their lineouts, and they're not even scrummaging well, nor are they tackling well at present. And now it's easy line-out ball for Japan, off their own throw in the short two-man line, up to halfway. Lafu breaks through, one tackle, flicks it across to Matsuo on the right wing, carried on by Kozuki. Once again, the Zimbabwean defence, with desperation more than conviction, hanging on to the Japanese attacker. Yagi and Ayaki in the middle of the line out for Japan. It goes deep, that's two in a row won by Japan, getting more than their fair share of ball from the line outs as well now. But again, they've been penalised in the line out. Brown again will dispatch this ball to touch from inside his own 22. And look at that. Virtually no one there from the Zimbabwe pack when the short line out was taken and away come the Japanese again inside their own half attacking from all over the paddock at the moment. The referee says that pass in fact has gone forward and Yoshida, boy, I bet men like John Kerwin and David Campisi would like to get as much ball as this fellow does. <laughs> I think he touches the ball more than the halfback. They love getting it to him too. They obviously rate them as their star and wham, across that side it goes all the time. Brown. Solid tackle made on him by Kashahadi. As the way comes the lock forward, Hayashi. Carried on by Matsuo. Flicks it back to Hoshikawa. And again, the gap opens up. But the pass has gone astray. On halfway, Maruvu appeared to knock the ball forward. Referee playing advantage here for Japan as they win it. As uh, Horikoshi again putting pressure on Curran. Did he step into touch? He did. This is on the line. Oh. I think Zimbabwean lock forward Mike Martin caught offside. So that's four line outs in a row that Japan have won completely dominating this match now and this time they will kick the goal with half time just a few minutes away and it's interesting too to see the way after Zimbabwe and the, and the penalty had been conceded the Zimbabwean forwards turned their back completely on the Japanese heavens you can never do that they'll go for a quick tap and they'll be right amongst you again a disappointing first half for Zimbabwe like their opponents today looking for their first win in the World Cup but it's Japan who well, he deserved their 13 to 4 lead. It's their fullback, Hashikawa. Endeavouring to stretch that lead to 12 points. a very good goal kicker indeed that's three out of four today for Hosokawa Japan lead by 16 to 4 half time just uh, three minutes away Japan who's 
greatest day in world rugby, I suppose, must have been in 1989 when they beat Scotland by 28 to 24. And the win today in the World Cup, I imagine, would probably rank alongside that, if not more so. Greg Brown is out play. And Katsuhiro Matsuo, their first 5 8 again, kicks deep. Good time. Plenty of depth from the kick, a few metres from his own line. And the last 50 metre kick again puts the Japanese on attack. See, most of this match has been played inside the Zimbabwe in half. Zimbabwe again managed to win some ball from the line out as Narube comes away with it inside the Zimbabwe at half as the Japanese defense looks a little loose there as the Zimbabwean forwards take it up the middle but they've lost it Narube trying to recover it Getting get a penalty for taking out. He has a bit of drama there. He does a flip. And stays down. Hurt. Suppose. Scrum midway. 22 and a half way inside the Zimbabwe in half. The quick hands again. The fullback joining with plenty of pace waiting for Yoshida. He lost him somewhere in the traffic. And away comes the Zimbabwean fullback uh, Brian Curran on the counter attack. But back there covering well coming across from the far side was Masuo realising his fullback was out of position and Teranori Masuo tidied that up well the teenager for Japan playing on the right wing today yes, poor tactic by Zimbabwe while they're running down that touchline with, with their big men going hard close to it, they should have kept it going kicking, was just kicking away possession Beatty again where they're getting most of their ball but once again it's really untidy ball and the Japanese forwards happy to pour through the line out but for the side and if they're going through just too quickly at present they're barging straight through an opportunity here for Zimbabwe to kick the goal which I'm sure they will to try and narrow that deficit of 12 points right on the stroke of half time Brian Curran their fullback and captain 31 year old the Zimbabwean players go into a huddle and some hard talking I'm sure and some deep thinking must be going on in these Zimbabwean players who have been thoroughly outplayed in this first 40 minutes of this match I'd say some deep sucking and heavy breathing would be going on they'll be looking for that aerobic background that they obviously threw away perhaps last night by having a bit of a run on the town by the look of it Curran with his second shot at goal today. But again, he's hooked it. So the score remains at 16 points to four. Japan very much in control of this final pool match here at the World Cup for 1991. Gets the Shiro Matsu to restart play from the 22. Again, they've got that restart down to a fine art as the big lock forward Hayashi comes through and takes the restart on the full beautifully, sets it up again for the Japanese back, but my goodness, they are having some problems with their hands in the midfield. Again, it was Kutsuki who lost it forward, the referee playing advantage here for Zimbabwe. What can they make of it? It's there for McMillan across to Zimba. Curran is up from fullback. Zimba delayed his pass. Just as Curran was uh, looking to have some room out there on the right, he wasn't actually running at any great speed. But nonetheless, the Zimbabweans keep it alive. Zimba. Loose and untidy play inside the Japanese half. And again, the Japanese have been penalised. Another opportunity here for Curran. An injury time in the first half here at Ravenhill and Belfast to narrow that gap to 12 points. Yes, they're playing a lot offside though in those rucks. The Japanese players are going way past the ball and taking guys out and then coming back in to pick it up when it comes free. 
I mean, uh, either Mr. Hawke is going to do something about it, or the Zimbabweans uh, will. But let's hope Mr. Hawke does more of what he's done now, that is, given a penalty for it. Brian Curran, 31 year old from Harare, captain of the Zimbabwean team today, playing in his seventh test. Penalty in the opening match and two conversions. And his team's second match against Skyman, against Scotland. No successes today from two matches and two kicks. <laughs> well, he seems to be infected with some hooking problem. Where all his three kicks at goal have gone today. He Hooked them out to the left and so at half time at the end of a fascinating 40 minutes of rugby here in Belfast, it's Japan. Fully deserved to be ahead by 16 points to four. About to get underway here at Ravenhill and Belfast, Zimbabwe playing from left to right for the remainder of this match, trading by 16 points to four. Richard Zimber again restarts the match. Japanese fullback Osakawa happy just to see the ball dead and play will restart from the 22. Two tries to one in the first half. Matua. Trying the ball drips away from his forwards and the Zimbabweans, Zimbabweans have a chance to set it up but again they're going backwards loose and uncoordinated as in drives the Japanese forwards but the whistle is gone. And again, they've been penalised for not staying on their feet. Yes, but again, taking the ball in with one hand. Did my Uve must go in and set it up with two and throw his shoulders down. No, no body position whatsoever. Craig Brown, after some deliberation, has decided that I think he will kick the goal. The kick of near 45 metres. Yes, that's a long way, dear. We say it again with that ball. It doesn't run really through once you start trying to punch it. And for mere mortals in this system, that's what you've got to do to get any ball at 45 metres. Let's see whether he's a good timer of the ball. Brown, in the first minute of the second half, says he really does give it a good thump. But the flight again out to the left. So even the change of goal kicker hasn't, in fact, helped Zimbabwe in fortune. They still trail by 16 points to four. Four shots at goal, and they've all missed today from two goal kickers. On the restart, tapped back by Alex Nickel on the Zimbabwean side as they again lose the ball. Sakawa there to save the day for Japan, but under no real pressure, even a couple of metres from his own line. But at least the Zimbabweans are close to the Japanese line. That's something they haven't seen much of today. Now towards the back of the line, it's won by the, the prop forward, Sakura. William Schultz giving chase, but there's nothing he can do as he sees it roll into touch. And again, the Japanese with some very astute and deep kicking bring themselves on to attack. Yashi. Kunda, the new man in the Japanese side today, a hooker. He waits on his officer number, Brian Beatty. Pushing and shoving, I think, in the line out there. And the Japanese again, they're in giving away their fair share of penalties. In fact, more than their fair share of penalties. Just as well as Zimbabweans so don't have a good goal kicker in their side today. Or else the Japanese would probably find that 16-4 lead might in fact have been a deficit. Again, a huge kick. But Brown manages to keep the ball in play a few metres from his own line. Back to his fullback. Brian Curran, but I don't think that's found touch, or has it? Yes, that's an excellent kick from Curran. 
50 metre kick as the Japanese restart with a quick line out inside their own half. Matsuo, Hira up, the long pass this time to Matsuo who just cut through his defence. He's got men outside of him. The fullback is there, Hosokawa. Now the chase is on. And who gets there first? It was William Schultz, but he was looking a bit ponderous as he made his way back over the goal line. The Japanese were descending upon him at a lot quicker speed than he was able to muster, but he just got there in the nick of time. points to four no change to the halftime score we've had uh, three minutes of play in the second spell again taken down nicely by Japanese forwards it's Ota they roll the Zimbabweans back towards their own 22 a few meters in from the far touch line it's Kunda with the ball now he lays it back for Horikoshi the referee was playing advantage Zimbabwe in fact caught offside and an opportunity here for Osakawa to kick the goal from a reasonably handy position, 15 metres in from touch. And his captain here now indicates, him, indicates that's exactly what he wants him to do. And going back a few moments, the chase for the ball over the goal line, and William Schultz, he just got there. He managed to force it there. Osakawa waiting for the Sand to arrive. Eight points today. Meanwhile, there's an uh, injury to one of the Zimbabwean players. Stevenson back to Alex Nickel, the prop forward, is it? Stevenson attention from the Zimbabwean physio. The oldest member in the Zimbabwean side at 33 years of age. Looking a little groggy. Seems to have suffered a cut above his eye. Meanwhile, Masakawa kicked well today. Three successes from four. meter kick for the Japanese fullback this to make it 19 points to four and he too has hooked it out to the left so no change to the halftime score three from five today for Hosokawa eight points so far the Barbie restart with a supposedly deep kick which really was a rather aimless one it's given the Japanese back Plenty of room to work with here as they take it up towards the 22. Hosokawa up from fullback. The ball going into touch on the full. And so back we come for the line out midway between the 22 and halfway. Zimbabwe want a bit of togetherness now, a bit of binding and driving and punching into the the middle of this lineup. Look back by Narube. As far as Craig Brown, we really haven't seen the ball move along the Zimbabwe back lane at all. And Brown from inside his own 22 takes the conservative option and just kicks the ball deep and puts his side on attack. So they've got to win a couple of lineups in a row to put some pressure on does Zimbabwe. See Brown, in fact, uh, hasn't passed the ball at all from the eight occasions he's received the ball. Kicking on five occasions, but this time he may well kick the goal as Japan have been penalised for pushing in the line-out. Yes, uh, they're infringing a lot of line -out. It's, uh I think it might only be a matter of time before one of them cops one. It's very frustrating if it happens all the time. Frustration in the Zimbabwean team as well at their inability to kick goals today. So they've taken the high ball, put it up near the Japanese goal line, but Tanali Latu, cool, calm and collected, 
hoops it down the opposite end of the field. Curran does well to keep the ball in the field of play. He decides he'll open it up. Looks it back to William Schultz as he gets away from Matsuo. Carried on by the halfback. Looks back, however, to the little Japanese halfback, the smallest man of the World Cup. He's only five foot two. Again, he ducks under some rather wayward tackles there from the Zimbabwean forwards, and now the Japanese forwards. Again, attempting to maul successfully, which they've done. A certain amount of success in this match, making again another 10 or 15 metres. Two across the fullback, who does join the back line very well, but not for the first time today, Hosokawa. Straywood is passing, but look at this magnificent stuff from Yoshida again. Carried on by Tafage, Akiromi Tafage, the Western Samoan in the Japanese in the Japanese side today. Here he is again. Tafage unloads the pass, kept alive by Yoshida. And it's still Japan with the momentum. Just a few meters from the Zimbabwean line. Moshikori again, across to the wing three-quarter, Matsuo must go in. He gets his first try of the day. He threatened a couple of times in the first half, and Japan out to a 20 points to four lead. Well, when they string their passes together, they almost look as if they can score at will. Yes, it was an excellent build-up. You'll watch it here. They had a more where they pushed about 10 or 15 metres down for a start, and then they took it round to the right, and then you hear them, see them here, sorry, clearing the ball very quickly to the left, and there was no Zimbabwean standing out wide. It was uh, two on one at the end of the day. And Mashuo makes it very easy coming round behind the coast. Three tries today for Japan, and a hit by 20 points to four. This match, they're looking increasingly safe now for the Japanese. But we have another stoppage here for injury. Japanese captain Seijo Hira going over to attend to his injured player. And Teranori Masuho, the man who was on the end of the chain here, it looked as if any one of three or four of them could have scored it. They strung their passes together, created the overlap for Masuho, and he just merely finished it off behind the post. Okakawa. That's the extra two points, it's 22 points to four. And Japan now with this very healthy lead, 12 minutes into the second spell. Ten points today for the Japanese fullback, 22 to four. I'm not sure if the Japanese team does manage to win today, it will be a major boost for rugby in that country. And it will be also one of the most popular victories here at the World Cup. From the kickoff, Brown kicks deep and back to the 22 we cut. Yes, many people have enjoyed watching the Japanese here because they've been clearing the ball as you see again in this game too and they're very keen to move the ball wide which at least makes the game exciting Cataral call for it stuff like that that makes it easy for them I mean you've got to hang on to the ball when you're tackled and lay it back not fling it back behind you like that otherwise you're just playing into the hands of the Japanese because they love it then and they'll flick it away from that set and move it very wide and move it quickly again, scampering through the little half gap was the halfback, he fed it to Yoshira, looking for the open spaces. He rather kept it up to the 22, carried on by the Japanese <laughs> as Hoshikori again through the little half gap, but this time the pass intercepted by his opposite number, up to the 22 they go. They've got the Zimbabweans again, absolutely run ragged. But they've been penalised once more for going over the top just when they had the Zimbabweans on the rope, as it were, they can see the penalty.
Zimbabwe trying to match the Japanese by running it, but they simply don't have the same vigor, the same purpose, or the same speed. And so they make a couple of meters up to the 22. There, for the taking by the look of it, no one seems terribly keen on winning the ball as it was placed there after the tackle. And Zimbabwean player spoken to by the referee. I thought he was going to penalise him for not staying on his feet, but I think he might have heard a little bit of warning. Yes, he did. You just said, stay on your feet, obviously, Tom. He pointed to keep up, keep up, keep up. Charity there from... There's a lot of uh, referees that are all saying the same thing. They're all telling to keep up and keep up, keep up players on their feet. But the big problem is that when someone does go to the deck, they've been told also, or had a directive, obviously, from the referee's appointments board, that they want them to blow up straight away that a man goes onto the deck and have another scrum. Well, I think it's ridiculous. We're getting up to the stage of the count, count of a couple of resets, about 64 scrums in a game. And nobody is very happy. By no bit, I mean sponsors particularly, and spectators have said that the whole tournament has been particularly boring. And if referees are going to continue not to allow one to ruffle more, that's exactly what it does become. So there's no continuity. So that's the answer, as far as you're concerned, El is it? To allow the ruck and more to develop? Absolutely. Just because the boat, either the one the scrum goes down or two the ruck or the ball doesn't mean to say one should stop and reset or we're going to have like league where it takes five minutes to play the ball back instead of the three quarters of a minute as it does in league. And we're having nothing else. And I think that's part of the problem with the All Blacks yesterday in, uh, against Italy. Half of them were running with their heads up when they got to the rucks and walls. They didn't expect there to be a ruck or ball when they arrived. All they expected to do was get down in scrum formation again and um, carry on. that stop it for injury to uh, Catterall, the number eight for Zimbabwe, play underway again, the Japanese would be back in business, a little flick pass to Yoshida, he's only 10 or 15 metres from the line, Yoshida, will he go all the way? Yes, he does! How many wingers are better than this man at scoring tries at the World Cup? Yoshihito Yoshida gets number two today to go with that spectacular try he scored against Ireland, it's 26 to 4. He loses his boots to best in the process. But a lovely step in. Look at this step in. What do you do when a guy does this? Watch this. Bang. Isn't that beautiful? And then it all goes and accelerates away. And the covering defense doesn't get him. Like a cat on a hot tin roof. <laughs> Man alive. I'd love to have been able to step like that. It is just magnificent to watch. Watch Six. this now, Jeff. Wham. Whoop. <laughs> He had the tenacity at the end of it all as well to pull his way through the tackle, pull his way over for the try. Who today for the little 68 kilogram Japanese left winger, Yoshihito Yoshida, and it's 26 to 4. The cover from the target would take the ball. We had 17 minutes of play in the second half. Four tries a day, and three of them have been scored by the wingers, all in the fact have been scored by the back. And the little up there from the man inside your sheet, just giving him a little more room to work with. That's all needed, and he virtually took the entire Zimbabwe back line on and down. And with the time they got there, it's good to try. Good flat running by the Japanese backs then too. They came up very flat, and they put very flat past them. They didn't go deep at all to try and get them. From the rip dance, Naruri that takes it up to the 22. Looks like there's a bit more fire and belly to these Zimbabwe players now. They realise that their fighters of the nation is on the line. But inevitably, instead so of just holding it there, the they are so lucky to get away with a penalty. 28 to 4, but I can't imagine with it in here, here and kicking for goal. Brian Crumston. The case will take a tap penalty on the 22. And half back to as he's saying, what in the gap over this from Flynn, all the way on zone. McMillan, across to the fullback, Harris. Picked up by Naruby. And the Zimbabweans bow back the try to Honeywell Naruvi. The tap penalty played Hudson Dibbon at 28 to 8. Yes, 
Next patient. And the second shot of goals. They've been kicking so poorly for Brown and Curran. They've decided that this is the way to go. Have a look. Nice dummy coming across here. And the Curran is an outside his wing. Chulk with the dummy. The pickup. And a really down. So from the lead, the little halfback is allowed to run, run, and run. And once he got through that initial gap, he hit up the open country. Chambers must mostly the back who cut back into the traffic as it were, but was making the tackle. And then River, who seemed reluctant to get the ball down, made for a fully did in goal area for Brown. The ball for try. And now, uh, Brian Curran has a chance to add the X2 ball. The grooves all right. He's going to have a ring. That's it. That's it. But maybe to keep on this person from a teaching pro because he's hooked every shot at goal today. Nonetheless, for the Zimbabweans, this is a lovely try. And they came out the journey for invasion and improvisation as well. And Bruce, like a good forward there at Brackland, picked up four and it was a try. Space out there on the right bank of the century called Kuduki. When he played, two unconverted drives today. No success at all for the old I think Japanese back line doesn't get back in a straight line back halfway from now where they're set up to be fired. Because they're going to be flat their fans, bring it up and try to pick a man with the cuss. Potting sheet scampers all upwards, 22 again. Turn over nicely. The Jeffrey back once more. The can across to Mazuma, who started on the right wing. He makes it a second try and second foul. 32 to 1. Five tries today for Japan. Four of them from the wingers. Kuri Yoshida, now to Mazuma. They did, they let it up there in front of him. He's back very well indeed. And no game of good things to come up. See you sure. I think England will be able to stick to their back line again, but a lot of the ball that requires a good quick start. I can't hope you're running on the ball, as you see. That's all. Took that time up through Hoskar, the fullback, and drew the fence, and Mumbo just to finish it off. So really is putting a month pay for Chippee's right here. It's by 32 to 1. I'll do it with that and I'll get it in my hand. Go. Go for A, and he too. Starts from the hooking of Hogan. Fred Allen, great all that coach, all of that. He started off deep, maybe, for the uh, first two weeks of the third, so a long one. And he should be able to get flatter and flatter and flatter on the pin yard ball. He should also be able to pass straight. That's the left with him and hand it to a full bear play. Another one, and the flat goes. Rebound, the Japanese boys that are matching their opponents. They ought to back them all there by number six. They really are marvellous. And certainly the World Cup has been much supported without the Japanese. That's true. He's been walking over there. You've got those with shoulder shots. He doesn't have to tackle. He just hits on the shoulder and high for 3 or K. And he has some pace for them. What are we tapping to? The fuck? Six Five tries so far today for Japan. Lead 32 to 1. David Walters entering his shoulder from the charge on. It's virtually the first time he touched the ball there. 22 year old today playing in his steam test from Harari. I think he's very happy. It's the same old thought. It's a crane record. Sure. The feature is the old better tool. He has seen plenty of uh, action there on the Pinks and Buggies, but most of it has gone past them about 100 miles an hour. The Japanese wing is running four tries so far today. They've got on a target, the man who threw that shot of jar on Waters. Target, the 27 year old Wing Samoan, who went to Japan in 1987, is now playing eight kidnappers for his country, for his daughter, man. Also spent some time playing for the Country University Club in Christchurch, New Zealand, earlier in his career in the night. Probably he come back because uh, right through since the Shisha University tour, uh, the nineteen sixty six there's been a great relationship between uh, the Japanese rugby and that community. They brought 
Beauty, the Shish University they are. And of course, that's the great name, Steve Carter, who back had a season or two with Canterbury University. He's not a like uh, the man out here. Like the place that's needed to bargain died. First, who I think has come on, there is some 17. David Lewis, I'm just back in his first mark, Cup 91. Okay, 26 minutes of now, what is his, uh, the order is coming right. A little time rising, so he can be back to bottom on the bench. And some people... From just nothing. a Thank you. 
his adopted country, Dekaroma Tupaga, who's has got this wonderful try. They really have got some of the best tries of the tournament. The Japanese was their captain, Isho Hirao, that beat man after man. Great support play. Lovely pace there from the big lock ball with Yaki. Turns it back for the loop ball with Tupaga and the Western Samoa. Showing all those skills that have produced uh, so many great tries for his countrymen. And in particular, Paul down there in Wales. Getting there for the try. Converted at 42 to 4 at the break. For the 1, 2, 3, 4 times. This match, this match not only take the Japanese, but they, but they will cherish for a long time. Their first victory in the World Cup, and they're doing it with a wonderful style. As Ewan McMillan trying to set something up here for the bar week. They want to cut their boots off. Crazy to be chipping 20 yards off the line for those big four coming up at the start of, or hopefully coming up at the start The last few minutes of the match here in Belfast, Japan ahead by 42 points to 8. We can talk about the Western Samoans, I call them the hardest hack tackling team that they've seen for years in, in the UK. Some tremendous tackling they've been putting in their games, I don't know how they're still standing. It's like uh, Perolini and Bale, who can't even make the Hawks Bay Ace side in New Zealand. Lighting the eyes also, Earl, we should mention. The rugby league cup from any parts of the world. Well, they'd certainly be having a look at a tackle like Perlini, a man who can put in about 30 tackles in a game of rugby. He's obviously one chap they would certainly be putting there. There was at least the one rugby league talent down from Australian club down in the Ponzi Breed yesterday when Western Star were doing what the Japanese are doing today, pushing the group play and star with that uh, 35 to 12 win over the Argentinian. Exciting. International observers as well as rugby league scouts. And today, we're seeing some of that again. Same sort of wonderful rugby, but this time from the Jeopardy. Not so brutal, but just as scintillating and with a little more subtlety. This man here, Yoshida, who you just saw get up, is rapidly becoming one of the stars of the World Cup pool game. Well, the position has been fairly even, but it's what each team has been able to do with that position, which has been the tail of this match. Now we have put it away almost entirely. Japan, though they haven't in fact been perfect with their handling, particularly in the second half, they've put together some marvellous tries. Five minutes. Who knows, there might be more to come. Maybe this little fellow gets the ball. Something's on. He's gone 10 metres. Time he decides to kick the duck. He has back up and follow very quickly. That man out there on the right wing. Ball is on a couple of meters from the line, and there to finish it off is Suzuki. He gets his try today. The points are mounting at a furious pace here at the It's for I think they want 50 today. From the kick from Yoshida, which just seemed to be drifting into no man's land. The Zimbabwean players got back there in the hurry. They collided with each other. And that opened up nicely for Kutsuki. Here's another angle. Was the, a nice weak grubber kick. But uh, they were all in tangles and messes. Uh, the Zimbabwean defence again. Yeah, that's all falling over and falling over one another. So we saw some lovely football there from Kutsuki, controlled the ball well as he dribbled it over the line and then just fell on it. No joy for Hosekawa, 36 to 8. Unfortunately, in effect, there was shepherding, or those people shepherding Yoshida as he ran behind them. He was running behind a wall for him. Actually, he stays much well away on the top bank. But nonetheless, this is how it finished. In style, with Japan. They put their eighth try in the afternoon, 46 to 8.
So into injury time here. With a note. 30 points and seconds. Spell for second half, half tries as a way comes to figure again. They're showing a bunch of score throws anywhere in the ground. But Suo goes looking for his third try. Back and forth. Come on, beautifully. They put your shear in. Is there going to be a hat trick to duck for the land? And William Schultz at last gets the confirmation. That's about the only time I think he's got near you see today. And just as the half entry beckons, a final from the Zimbabwean winger, William Schultz. You see the determination of Schultz's eyes that he does not the time. I don't know what There's no way he's going to score with William Schultz. So the Zimbabweans are running it from their own goal line. The new man on the field, that Chippy Roberts. Charging through and losing Japanese tackling. Again, throwing it away. And then they had, he had men on both sides and just never found a way. Halfback uh, McMillan, who just ran straight through the defence of Japan, such that it was, and again, rather an elegant shoulder charge on the little halfback from Zimbabwe. We've been lucky not to have been penalised, but a beautiful pass, <laughs> lovely there for the Tsuki. The fullback is clear as he flips out from the top. He might get hit. But then a lovely tackle, just a couple of metres short of the corner leg. Copy the tackle this time from Craig Brown. And in the last few minutes of the match, Zimbabwe are not making tackles, but a far too on the quick run. He's going to run it on the line. But Brian O'Kelly is not happy with it. It's been one of the most entertaining matches you see here in 1991. Just out of the push again. That one again, Dan. Very flat. On the goal line, but once more, Japan have been smart to the time for being offside. And Zababi is going to try and hear no mind for making very far passes like that. Left behind there by Brendan Cattle, a couple of years from Ernest. The way comes the Japanese forwards again. And it's back here to the back. The 50 points of the half century might well be in the offense, is it? Indeed, as this time it's the first fight. Right. Here on match duo that just slipped through the very weak Zimbabwean football round behind the post at 50 days to Japan. People watch this game. It's a lovely little jinky gives here. Typical first by that try. Get into the hole and slide through on that angle. As I said at the beginning of the game, he's a very, very good little guy. That just a lovely set. Cut out. New goal adage. Classic way to move. Cut in, cut out. It's 50 points to what Japan boasts the second highest score of World Cup of 1991. What a magic day for Japanese rugby. Can you believe that? Line 50 points to 8. Their first hit World Cup. They've done it as well. It was 16 for it of eight, but seven magnificent second half tries of carried Japan to their most historic win and their first World Cup. They don't see how they are. They're all going to get a lot of new later on the Japanese chance chart. That's all beautiful players. They've never seen that obviously really clear. They waited 